bath time, my friends. Oh my goodness, I like the music in the background. Yeah! Woohoo! It's another wonderful math video. Well, at least I hope it's going to be wonderful. I think it will be. Usually they are. Because when you love math, you know, it's just, it's about learning. I like it. Anyway, let's take a look at our lesson. It's lesson 6.6, 6, double sixes. Woo, yeah. And then we have our topic of the day is going to be add and subtract fractions. Cool, we've already been doing a little bit of this, looking at the modeling. Now we're going to be actually adding and subtracting them. Yeah. Essential question, our learning target. What we're responsible for, what we're accountable for, is how can you use a common denominator to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators? Wow, that's one long learning target there, Mr. Wara. I know, and we even have a connect that says you can use what you have learned about common denominators to add or subtract fractions with unlike denominators. Yeah, woohoo, yeah, yeah. Now, let's go ahead and can't do anything, Mr. War, without the you-know-what. Oh, unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. Real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Here it is. Malia bought shell beads and glass beads to weave into designs in her baskets. Oh, there it is over there. Let's take a look. Cameraman. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, my. You know what? I'm always impressed with those people that can make all those beautiful kind of ornaments and bracelets very impressive i take my hat off to you guys it says she bought one quarter pound of shell beads and three eighth pound of glass beads how many pounds of beads did she buy and getting that you need to unpack the problem here well we come over here and it says first thing it says underline the question you need to answer that's always important when we start unpacking the problem what are we being asked to do? What are we being asked to answer? And there it clearly says, how many pounds of beads did she buy? Cool, first one down. Now it says, draw a circle around the information you will use. Okay, well the information that we're gonna to need to use is definitely that she bought that one quarter pound of shell beads right there we're going to use that and we're going to be using three eighths pound of glass beads but something i want to make sure that you know is that in order to add fractions with unlike denominators and we do we have fourths and eighths that we first need to write equivalent fractions with like denominators there's no way we can do that when we're starting to unlock this problem okay key key thing and something to just remind you is that multiplying the denominators will always and i emphasize the word always produce a common denominator okay always I just know that that is true now it does say here it says we're going to add the one quarter plus three eighths this is to write your answer in simplest form one way find a common denominator by multiplying the denominators i just mentioned that so four times eight is 32 okay so 32 is a common denominator so use the common denominator to write equivalent fractions with like denominators. Then add and write your answer in simplest form. So here we have one quarter. So one quarter is going to equal, yeah, since we have the eight equal 32, we're gonna multiply the quarters by eighths and we're gonna multiply the eighths by quarters when we get there. And here that's gonna give us eight over 32. Now we have three eighths is equal to, again, we're adding this to the one quarter. Three eighths, we're gonna be multiplying that by quarters like I mentioned. Okay, because we need that we need that denominator of 32 like we said we were going to get. And then 3 times 4 is 12. So we end up with 12, 30 seconds there. When we add those together, we get 20 over 32 or 20, 30 seconds, which is equal to, well, if we had to reduce, we have to reduce that. Let's see, a common factor. Am I seeing 4? I do. If I divide this by 4, and I'm going to write this in for you, and that will give us 5. And then divide by 4, that's going to give us 8. So Malia bought five eighth pound of beads, still less than one pound. Now, there is yet another way. Another way says that we find the least common denominator. And the least common denominator often is referred to as the LCM. I'm okay with you learning the least common denominator. It's just really important that you understand what it means. Sometimes we can do these steps the algorithm in math, and then we don't know what we're doing anymore. So it's always important that when we 
start learning a, a, a shortcut, a skill that we always try to connect it back to what the bigger idea is. And again, the bigger idea here is, without a doubt, is about making denominators like denominators, making them the same so that we can add them. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to add fractions. They need to be the same size. Just like that pizza. You can cut that pizza up in a lot of different sizes, but it's important if you want to try to add how much is there that they all be equal sizes. So here the least common denominator of 1 quarter and 3 eighths is. Does it tell us how to get to that point? No, it doesn't. Maybe you already know. But the way that I would find this out by simply skip counting, okay, and finding multiples. And that's what they're called. They're called multiples. And by finding multiples of each one of those denominators is going to get you closer to getting the least common multiple. So in this case, we had used 32, and 32 is not listed here. If we keep counting by 4s, and if we keep counting by 8s, eventually we're going to see that they both have 32 in common, because 8 times 4, and then of course 4 times 8 is going to be 32. But if you notice right now, I see one that they both have, and that's 8. So we would actually say that the least common denominator and again, multiple denominator. Is that confusing? Multiple, these are called multiples. We're going to use one of those multiples as our denominator. That's the only difference between a denominator and a multiple. Okay, so here we have one quarter now times, because we're going for that least common denominator, that's going to be different. We're going to have to multiply by 2 here because that's going to give us our 8. Okay, so we put our 8 down as our, our denominator now here, because that's what we decided on here. We were going to find the least common denominator. So now we have two 8s. Well, for the three 8s, it already has the denominator we want, so we don't have to make any changes. Now when you take two 8s plus three 8s, we get five 8s. Wow, that went a little bit faster. You might say, Mr. Wara, that's definitely the way to do it. I, I agree, you don't end up having to simplify your fraction. Now if you look back at our other problem, You'll see that, yeah, we end up with 20, 30 seconds. That made it difficult because we did have to divide the 4 out. So it actually just added one more step. So now let's go ahead and look at mathematical practice 1. So I know we go over these mathematical practices quite a bit. And we keep going over them just so that that way you can understand that these are embedded throughout the Common Core math. These mathematical practices are actions that we take in order to solve uh, math problems. So here, the number one, and interesting, it's this one that makes the most sense, that it's mathem mathematical practice one, because it says make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Perseverance is really important that we don't give up. We get all the way through the problem. See, so when I'm presented with a problem, I can make a plan, carry out my plan, and evaluate its success. Evaluate reasonableness. It says explain how you know whether your answer is reasonable. Uh, I think I would definitely have said right from the beginning, an estimate would have probably helped out. So let's go ahead and look at that. So if I did an estimate, I'm going to look at my two fractions here. See, my two fractions, one was one quarter and the other fraction was three eighths. Well, both fractions, when we think of benchmark fraction, they're both less than one half. They, so my answer should definitely be less than one because both of my fractions are less than one half. So it couldn't go over one. So that's something I know right, right away. So if I were to kind of think of a quarter being pretty small, that's how I would say that since 5 eighths is close to the, the halfway mark, that makes sense to me because one quarter is almost zero and maybe 3 eighths is close to a half. So if I were to take a zero plus a half, I'd end up with about a half. And it looks to me that our answer, 5 eighths, is right around that. So that's how I know my answer is reasonable. All right, we finished one page. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now it's time. Page master. Yes. Oh, yes. Another page. Yes. It's like we're halfway through. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Example. When subtracting two fractions with unlike denominators, follow the same steps you follow when adding two fractions. Okay. However, instead of adding the fractions, subtract. So here's the subtract. Nine tenths minus two fifths. Write your answer in simplest form. So let's just keep the 9 tenths as 9 tenths. And here, while well, we're going to have to do a little bit of work, not a lot, we'll put our 2 fifths here. Let's multiply that. We'd have to multiply it by 2 over 2. That way we can get our new denominator as tenths, which is what we want. We want those like denominators. But now we're subtracting. So now we're subtracting 9 tenths, and maybe I'll write that over here. 9 tenths 
minus 4 tenths is going to equal 5 tenths. And since 5 is half of 10, I would just rewrite that as 1 half. It says describe the steps you took to solve the problem. Well, let's just start off with saying first. All right, there we go. One example down. Let's move to the next problem. Explain how you know whether your answer is reasonable. Again, we didn't do an estimate, but just like the last problem, we're going to say the same kind of thing. We're going to say, well, 9 tenths is almost 1, okay? And 2 fifths, it's not, it's about half, so it seems like my answer should be half. So if I were to do an estimate, I would say 1 minus 1 half should be about a half. Now, did we get about a half? We got, we, we actually got exactly a half. So they asked how I know my answer is reasonable. Okay, now it's time for Share and Show. That's right, I always say Share and Show. So Share and Show has your math board. So you want to pull out your little math board. That's right. And put the video on pause. Find the sum or difference. Write your answer in simplest form. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm looking at this and I got a little bit of work here. Here it says 5 twelfths plus 1 third. Well, I'm looking at that and I'm immediately seeing that 12 is a multiple of 3. It's important to understand your multiples. So when you look at 3, you can think 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3. 3 times 4 will get me 12 and that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to put 5 twelfths plus, and I'm just going to write it this way. You could write this all different ways. I'm going to put 1 third times 4 over 4. Okay, does that make sense? Equals, and then I'm just going to rewrite it again. So then I would have 5 twelfths then is going to be equal to, if I add, it's going to be equal to 4 over 12. And now I'm just adding those together. Now it says to write my answer in simplest form. Simplest form means I need to look to see if the numerator and the denominator have a common factor. And they do, they have a 3. So I'm going to divide this by 3 divide that by 3, and if I were to divide 12 by 3, I would have 4 down here. I'm almost thinking about canceling here, and that would be 3 here. See, so I end up with a new fraction, and that'll be 3 fourths. So that's my answer, problem number 2. They say that you can always get a common denominator okay, by multiplying the fractions, and 7 times 5 is 35. There's a lot of different ways you can write that. I'm going to write it this way. I'm going to write 2 fifths. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, I'm going to multiply that by 7 over 7. Because we're going to multiply it by 7s to get that denominator that's the same. And then I'm going to take my 3 7s. And here, you know what, I'll just put times, I won't put my parentheses, times 5 over 5. So now if you notice, if I multiply across, I get 14 over 35. 3 times 5, which is 15 over 35. See, now I have my like denominator. Now I just need to add 29 over 35. 29 is a prime number. A prime number means that it has exactly two factors, itself times 1. That is in simplest form. Now we'll come over here to number 3. Now again, I'm looking for the least common denominator, which means I'm also looking for the least common multiple. That's least common multiple. And then LCD is least common denominator. Just so you understand the difference. So if I just take my least common multiple, I'm just saying 4, 8, 12, 16. And then when I do the same thing for 6, I'm going 6, 12, 18. 24 and you can see the least common one that they have is 12 so I'm gonna take the least common denominator of 12 so that's gonna be multiplied by yeah in this case it's gonna be times 2 over 2 that's how I'm gonna get it plus and then over here I have 3 quarters but that's gonna be multiplied by 3 over 3 and I'm, I'm aiming to get that 12 denominator okay so here now I have 2 over 12 plus now I have 9 over 12 that's going to equal 11 over 12. And the nice thing about finding that least common denominator and that least common multiple, what we used, our least common multiple is what we use for our least common denominator, is that now we're done. It's in simplest form. All right, we have 3 quarters minus 1 eighth. I'm recognizing right away that 8 is a multiple of 4. So I'm going to put 3 quarters times, and I'm going to multiply that 2 over 2. That will get me my 8 here, OK? And now I'm subtracting, though of 1 eighth because there is, it's already, it has the denominator I want. It's equal to 5 eighths. Ooh, I like that one. That was nice and easy. And that's it. There's no more on that one there. Last one, number six, 9 tenths minus a quarter. 
I can multiply them and I can get 40 and that will give me a common denominator. I'm just kind of wondering if there's one. How can I get it so that one will share the, one of the multiples of 10? 10, 20, 30. Well, 4 times 5 is 20. 10, 20. Okay, yeah, that works. So I'm going to use 20. So 9 tenths times, to get that 20 on this one here, I'm going to have to do 2 over 2 because 10 times 2 is 20 minus 1 quarter. And I'm going to have to multiply that 5 over 5. That's how I'm going to get each of these to equal 20. Okay, now I have 18 over 20. I'm going to subtract 5 over 20. And now I end up with 13 twentieths. And this is in simplest form because I chose to use the least common denominator. You know, my friends, yes, you know it. It's another math video. It's another math video. <laughs> it's so much fun. I know math is so much fun. And it is time to say, yes, my friends, hasta la vista, my friends. Live long and prosper.